not so much that stutterers should get over stuttering, but the listener should get over stuttering. It's the listener that doesn't say to somebody, you know, you should really get over your multiple sclerosis. You really should get over your, uh, your uh, you know, heart disease. Welcome to Some Stutter Law, Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about stuttering. My name is Greg O'Grady, and I am a person who stutters and a co-host of Some Stutter Law, Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about stuttering, along with my co-host. And I'm Caitlin Mayo. I'm a speech-language pathology student, and I'm Greg's co-host on this podcast. Some Stutter Law mission is dismantling and rebuilding stuttering, let's start listening. Some Stutter Law mandate is in the spirit of Newfoundland and Labrador humor, robust and frank interactive discussions. Some Stutter Law podcast aims to rebuild confidence and hope for today's and tomorrow's persons who happen to stutter by dismantling stuttering myths, stigma, stereotypes, and barriers. The objectives of Some Stutter Law podcast are supporting, raising awareness, and increasing understanding and acceptance of stuttering, providing people who stutter, their families, professionals, students, and the general public with current information, research, and resources about stuttering, and promoting advocacy and support for people who stutter. Today, Some Stutter Law warmly welcomes John Paskovich. John was born in Ukraine, of Ukraine parents in Austria in 1948, and came to Canada as a young child and currently lives in Winnipeg. He is married and has an adult son. After graduating from University of Winnipeg, John studied photography and filmmaking at Ryerson in Toronto. Since leaving Ryerson, John has worked for over 40 years as a freelance documentary photographer and filmmaker. He continues to work in this field. John began stuttering at age seven and continued to do so, but not as much. John produced a documentary called Unspeakable. Unspeakable examines the nature, history, and treatment of a speech impediment that affects about 1% of the world's population, regardless of language, culture, class, and ethnicity. John, the film's director, is a person who stutters. He also narrates and is an active participant in the film. His story and the stories of others in the film are poignant funny, angry, and courageous, providing eloquent testimony to what it means to live in prison and what the poet W.H. Arden called the Tower of Stutter. According to John, this film is called for liberation, not from stuttering, but from the ignorance and stigma that surround it. John, uh, before we uh, ask you to get into the documentary, can you share with our listeners a little bit, a little bit about your history uh, as a person who stutters? Yeah, I, it's a long history. Uh, I, as you mentioned, I started stuttering uh, when I was seven years old in grade two. And uh, I, I remember my, my very first block, it was in school. Uh, I, um, I had to read something uh, and the teacher was um, was standing over my shoulder and I blocked on a word. I, I, I told him I, I can't say the word. And he, he said the word himself, but I said, I can't say the word. And, I, I, and he looked at me like something is wrong because I actually could not say the word. <laughs> And uh, that, that was my first uh, uh, re- 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 recollection of, uh, of having a, uh, a block. I, I think the, uh, the, the, the chances are good that, that I was probably 
stuttering earlier than that, perhaps, but in, in a much, uh, uh, much milder, repetitive way, but I can't say for sure, but, but, but I do remember the, the first time where I actually seized on a word. And since, since, since then, I've, I, 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 I've been stuttering, uh, well, my, my whole life with all kinds of peaks and valleys. Uh, yeah. Could you share a little bit about when you start to take speech therapy or for your stuttering? See, I actually, I never had a, okay. a, any speech therapy. Uh, and here in Winnipeg, the, uh, the facilities for, uh, for speech therapy are abysmal. So, John, what made you decide not to take speech therapy? Well, uh, I checked it out and I found that uh, th th it, it just wasn't, uh, it, it, it seemed very raggedy. I, I, at the time, uh, I was in high school when, when I actually sought out speech therapy and I, uh, I got in, in, into speech therapy, but uh, the, uh, the person I was dealing with did not inspire confidence in me. Like, uh, unfortunately. John, uh, as a like person who stutters now with a lot of lived experience, and uh, what is your attitude towards stuttering at present? Do you oh. feel more accepting of it? Yeah, I, I feel much more accepting of my stutter. Uh, uh, yeah, during the, the, the adolescent years, High school and and then the university for me what, what, what was the hardest. It, it was very hard because as an adolescent you you want to make friends you, you want to go out on dates uh, you you want to you you, uh, you want to use the phone all all those things which uh, which young people do and when you're in your university you want to participate in the in the seminars at at, at school and. Um, uh, at that time, uh, my 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 stuttering became quite severe because the the harder I tried not to stutter, the 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 worse it it got. So that, that's a situation which many stutterers are are familiar with. But when when you're young, you just want to try harder, and uh, and it got me nowhere. And it, in fact, it made my. In fact, my it made my, my my stuttering worse, and, and it made me as as a consequence more anxious about my speech. Do you feel now, John, that you have a certain degree of acceptance of your stuttering, or does it vary depending how uh, you know how fluid your speech is? Like we know all know that stuttering can be very fluid, but are you more accepting of it, or does it frustrate you still? Well, uh, I'm much more accepting of, of my stuttering. In, in order, ordinary life, uh, going to, to a grocery store or, or making a phone call, I, I don't have a problem there whatsoever. However, because I, I'm still working in the, in, the, in the photography and documentary film business, I often have to make cold calls to... to, 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 to some some institution, some broadcaster, uh, some 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 arts council uh, somewhere, and if I don't know the, the 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 person, I've had so many bad experiences with, with cold calls. Uh, I find myself go, go, going back into my old habits because I'm afraid that that the person that I'm <laughs> you, you, you're usually requesting some some sort of funding, money. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, so 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 the pressure is on me to, to sound intelligent. And very often, people who are not familiar with uh, with, with stuttering I think uh, the, the person at the other end who they never met before is not intelligent. And, and I've had several experiences over, over my life where uh, 
the that 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 has happened to me, and it's always been uh, with cold calls. I've been hung up on, and uh, 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 I remember one person telling me what. what when, when I met her, she said, uh, uh, from your phone call, I thought you, uh, I thought you would look different. <laughs> Whatever that meant. <laughs> Perhaps, you know, I was had horns or something. I don't know. <laughs> John, now uh, let's talk about the unspeakable uh, film. What made you decide to produce this? Well, there, 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 there's a saying, uh, 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 you know, uh, put your film where your mouth is. So if, if, if something is, uh, is important for you and it, 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 it's something you talk about either with others or, or with yourself, and certainly in my case, I, I would talk to myself about, about stuttering. I, I decided to make a film, uh, um, to, to make a film about it. Uh, I, I, I thought it would be, be a worthwhile th thing to, to do. do. Do you want to share with the listeners what the film is all about? Yeah, the, 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 the film is essentially uh, a, a, about, m a, about me learning about stuttering exposing my, my, my stuttering and uh, go, going through all, uh, the, all, all the therapies on my own that, 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 that I never had. And, and, and on the film, I, I try out the, the, the various therapies that, the, that are available, the, 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 the main, street, uh, main street, the mainstream therapies, and uh, and and also, I interviewed other stutterers who often took uh, uh, therapies that, that that were not mainstream, and and so my my, my intention was, was to talk about stuttering, sh uh, show the variety of people uh, who have who stutter, the, the 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 varieties of stuttering, and of and and the varieties of, of, of therapies out there. Uh, and underneath my my theme was something I've felt for a long time. It's not so much that stutterers should get over stuttering, but the listener should get over stuttering. It's the listener that doesn't say to somebody, you know, you should really get over your multiple sclerosis. You really should get over your uh, your uh, you know heart disease. <laughs> I mean, uh, stuttering is uh, is uh, is a neurological disorder compounded by uh, by experience, which reinforces the uh, the uh, the speech patterns that that we call stuttering. I was thinking, did you want to talk maybe a bit more about your experience when you were creating this documentary with? going through the different therapies on your own? Did you find anything that really worked for you? Anything that didn't work at all? Well, you, you know, I, I found that, that they all help. That, 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 that they all help. Uh, yeah, they all help in, in some way, depending on the person. Uh, as they say, one size does not fit all. Uh, but, but they all, they all help. What what they made me aware of is is uh, is uh, of all my um, of all my secondaries, and so I almost got got rid entirely of of, of my secondary be behaviors, and I I spent a long time stuttering on purpose, which is very hard to do, very very hard to do, and that uh, that helped me a lot. But what I found most of all that helped me is to just keep talking. Just keep, keep talking because uh, I think if you, uh, this is for me only, if you only rely uh, on therapy, for me, I, I would be in, a, in uh, always walking on eggshells. 
and and uh, and, uh, and I didn't not I did not like that. But I learned that walking on eggshells for a while, you, you know what it's like on walking on eggshells. So try not to walk on eggshells using that particular therapy. It's a, it's a mental game. <laughs> it, it's a neurological disorder, but you, you have to, you, you, you have to, you have to uh, sort of re resolve it in, in your mind. I don't know if that makes any sense, uh, because as, as as we know, it's such a personal thing. Everybody, every, everybody who, who who stutters deals with it in another way, and and they're very often successful in their own way, while the other person uh, tries the same method, and they aren't successful, so they they have another method. Yeah, we always emphasize on the podcast how individual the experience of stuttering is in terms of sure. your actual stutter, in terms of what works for you, in terms of what secondary behaviors you experience. Mm -hmm. It's all so individual. And even in my program, we're, we're reinforcing how you know unique it is to a person. So it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. Yeah, and, 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 and age is so, so important, whether, whether you're a child and an adolescent or a young person who uh, you know is starting out on their career the, 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 these are all things uh, yeah they're, they're, they're so important speech is so important and, and and as i'm older now i'm an old guy now now it, 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 it's not that that, that 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 important for me and I, and as a result of that my my my, my speech is more more fluent i, I still stutter but i I keep rolling along. You know, you've seen, uh, that's an interesting, uh, you know, this is an interesting analogy, John, you're making about speech therapy, like in terms of don't rely on the actual speech therapy itself. You've got to sort of try to, um, I guess, balance it, it out. Because I think, are you saying that uh, if we rely, rely on speech therapy, we're sort of a, becoming too dependent is too much pressure on being fluent or can you elaborate yeah 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 uh, yeah for yeah for for, for, for example um, fluency shaping you know you you, you you if you do fluency shaping you 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 do 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 it uh, um, at home or or with, with people you're familiar with and uh, and it's working fine, but then uh, if you go outside into a store, you use your fluency shaping, and 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 you you find your speech falls apart. Well, uh, it, uh, don't say fluency shaping is not working. It's like something has ha something is in you that does not allow you to do fluency shaping on the outside. What is it? Is, is it embarrassment? Is, is it fear? Uh, uh, what, what is it? So what, what I'm saying is not to, 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 to rely on fluency shape, not, not to say, how, how should I say it? Not, not so much to use uh, therapy as a crutch, but, but uh, uh what what is it about you that this is not working for you well what is it you you might want to try something else so if fluency shaping is not working where you're relying on that slow methodical speech but you're still anxious well maybe you should also try voluntary stuttering for, for example just to do do different things uh, to, to to see what your reactions are, what, what your internal reactions are. Uh, yeah, the diet, that's what I found uh, uh, help 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 me. It just uh, being in touch with my internal reactions. So I think what you're talking about, John, is the emotional component of stuttering, the the, the low to surface. Um, right. Other iceberg. So, how, so how have you handled the emotional component over the years, John? 
Well, so, sometimes not, 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 not very well at all. Uh, it, it, especially in, 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 in situations where, as I said, I've had to make cold calls at, 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 at the university where, where I had to uh, be a part of a seminar with other uh, students. I never participated. I, I stayed home and, and, and had a, you know, a cheap excuse that, that, that I wasn't well and, and, and things. So, but I realized that 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 uh, that was that, that 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 was wrong. That that, that was wrong. And as and and and, and, and as the uh, as the uh, as the years went by, I discovered that uh, that people have their own problems. That they're not that interested in, in your stuttering as much as you think they are. <laughs> they're more in, in, interested in their own problems. And and uh, and I'd over the years, you know, dawned on me. But I, but 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 as I said, still now, if 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 I have to make a phone call, and I start stuttering uh, on on the phone call to to somebody at the other end, uh, uh, who's important uh, for a possible project, I I, I still at, at this late age fall fall back there that I try too hard to be fluent. And, and when I do flu when I do voluntary stuttering with that person, they don't understand that either because they they have no concept of uh, why I'm doing voluntary stuttering. <laughs> it's interesting, John, because I've been thinking about something similar and the analogy and then, you know, sometimes I have a lot of difficulty myself. I have some train wreck experiences, and then I try to go back on my speech uh, techniques, targets, which normally work. But the analogy of trying to uh, balance it out, the, the, the analogy that came to me just recently is a, uh, you know, the old manual cars when you go into first, second, third, you know, like, well, when you put this pressure on yourself to be fluent, emphasis, which is an evil word, that, that it's hard to get back to the, the target and make this smooth transition, you know what I mean? Uh, yes, I, 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 absolutely, I, I, absolutely. And, 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 and I have this uh, terrible reaction. I've had it my, in my whole life. It, it's uh, and I've read about this. I actually spoke with uh, with the fellow John Kalinowski, who invented the speech easy uh, device you put in your ear. And I I got this uh, terrible uh, problem with my mirror mirror neurons that that when somebody is talking really fast, I have to. Uh, I, I have to keep up with their speech, and I hate that. <laughs> so I try to, uh, I, I try to slow down, but but if, if, if very often it doesn't work. I I, I don't know if, if you've had that, that that experience. I find that uh, when I'm in a group of uh, when, when I'm in a meeting, well, Zoom meetings are a perfect example. We were so bombarded with so many articulate people. It, yeah. I, I, I allow it to intimidate me. And then so then I try to keep up. And then as soon as I try to keep up to be fluent, that's, that's when it all falls apart. It's almost like we're, we're trying to impress, as you're saying, we want to feel important, be accepted. But this is a trap we all, many of us fall into. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, I, 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 absolutely, I, absolutely. And very, very, very uh, ironically, uh, be, 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 because I, I'm often behind the camera, uh, I've had so many bad, bad experiences when I've been on the camera, when somebody's been filming me, uh, a television interview, uh, or a... Uh, a radio interview, those are in my worst situations now because, uh, because I've had so many bad experiences uh, with, uh, 
with interviewers who 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 don't know me and when i start answering their questions and and i start stuttering uh, very often that they react like, uh, what the heck is going on with this guy? What have I got myself into? How are we going to edit that one? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like whenever we, um, the people who started trying to, uh, we, we anticipate. Mm -hmm. anticipate. And based on our bad experiences, that outweighs trying to focus on the actual conversation. You know what I mean? We, yeah. we anticipate. What happened before we got upset and got anxious and whatever and a snowball and i think this is a trap we all get into yeah the the the, the first really bad i could still recall the first really bad experience that that that, that, that i had with that I, I i i went for a television interview with my um, my filmmaking partner we we had finished the film and and we went into the studio to to to, to do an interview and so we, we sat down and the interviewer started asking us, us questions and, he, and, 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 and when he asked me a question, I, I, I stuttered. And he looked at me like, uh, as I said, like what's going on with this guy? And for the rest of the interview, after that single question, he only talked to, he only talked to, to my filmmaking partner. Like I was basically, I was out of the picture. So, you know, uh, so that person uh, should get over stuttering. He, you know, is absolutely, absolutely ignorant of, of, of what stuttering is. John, uh, if our listeners were interested in seeing Unspeakable, how, how would they uh, access it or find it? Well, uh, Unspeakable is a National Film Board of Canada film, and the outfit that, 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 that distributes National Film Board of Canada films now is, is an outfit um, in Ontario called McIntyre Media. So if, if, you, uh, if, if you Google McIntyre Media, McIntyre with an MC, McIntyre Media, uh, the... Uh, unspeakable it, 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 it is there. No, uh, refresh my memory. When was it made? You know, I, Greg, you'll have to refresh my memory because <laughs> I, I can't I remember. Think 2006 <laughs> rings a bell. Is that? Yeah, it? it's somewhere around there. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so somewhere around there. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. And and uh, what was the response to it from the group? Because I remember you coming to that group where we met, and I think I can't remember if you showed it or you were just uh, promoting it. Uh, I, I I think I showed a part of it. Yeah, uh, just, just just a part of it, and then uh, and, and, and I talked a bit, and 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 there were some questions, I believe. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll add, I, 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 I've had other uh, other screenings, and so so they they all merge. Uh, I'm just gonna interject with my quick Google search. It was 2006. You were hey. right. Oh, well done, Greg. Well done. <laughs> Good guess. <laughs> John, just to let you know that, and I have to find it, but I do have the uh, promotional poster that you handed out that time. Oh, it was already. Oh. I still have it. My memory serves me right. And uh, because I was going through some old papers, and I think I'll, I'll if, if I find it, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, make you a copy and send it to you. Well, uh, you know, well, well, thank you. But, 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 but it, it is necessary because I have a few myself. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> thank <That's> you. <laughs> so, what was the response overall to the documentary? Uh, uh, I, I, I would say it, it, it was good. It, it, it was good uh, overall. I didn't have any uh, any, any any negative comments as as, uh, as such. Yeah, uh, 
it was good. It wasn't a, you know, a, a major box office success or anything uh, like, 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 like that, but, 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 but uh, it screened at some festivals and there were the, the there, were, there were public screenings. Uh, yeah. So it well, went well, you know, reading your summary, John, I feel that it will be a good educational resort even today. Do you think as much has changed? Uh, my, my, much, I, I, I don't know how, how much has changed. I mean, stuttering is still with us. Uh, there is always, every once in a while, it's, 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 something happens. Uh, there, there, there are, 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 are drugs which are tested. Um, uh, and, and brain scans are continuously be, be being studied and and, and and looked at but but stuttering uh, is essentially uh, re remains a medical mystery and uh, and the, the various things happen to, to make people aware aware of stuttering uh, a, a film the film that I made that that, that was its Intent is, 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 is to get uh, the idea of stuttering out there, so so so, so people know what it what it is, and, and then there's feature films like the the King's Speech helps, but then those 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 uh, fade, and uh, in many ways we're we're back to um, to square one. So you see what uh, some stutter law is trying to do. You're right, John. I think we need to keep stuttering in the forefront. We need, we need to get, you know, some sort of law we're trying to build awareness, understanding, acceptance. And, and uh, you know, in Newfoundland, there's, there's very little uh, attention paid to stuttering. And yeah, I, 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 as in all of Canada, and as in fact, uh, all over the world. Yeah, it, it's, I, I, I think it's the, it, 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 it's probably the, uh, the, uh, the 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 last uh, you know uh, last uh, ailment, <laughs> shall we say that that people still laugh at. The, the, they find humorous. So Kayla, it's, it's obvious that we have a lot of work to do, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, just looking at it from somebody who's who's not a person who stutters and what we've been we've been learning um in my fluency disorders course that i'm taking this semester is like the difference between a what's termed a less typical disfluency and a more typical disfluency because everybody has some disfluent speech all the time mm. and so i think that that is why it is so misunderstood by the public is they're not aware that this is an actual ailment it is it's you know they think that it's just something laughable that happens every day which it's it's not yeah it, it, it just it, it just throws how people look at the world it tilts it it's like what's going on with this guy or with, with this gal like something like what's wrong with them yeah it, for it, sure but 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 if, but 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 if somebody has speech where it's obvious that this person had a stroke or something, then they're 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 familiar with that. Well, that person's got, you know, a problem with uh, with with talking. But this this person talks sometimes, or repeats themselves, and then blocks and say something fluently, and the whole cycle re repeats itself. What's with that? <laughs> yeah. No, I. <laughs> I, I can think I can definitely think of a few other, you know, illnesses, disorders, diseases, anything where there's some examples, but I don't think anything to the degree of stuttering is, is laughed at or misunderstood as much in the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the people who, who are, you know, uh, obese are laughed at. I, I, I could think of that. Uh, yeah. But uh, the, the, there aren't many. Or I guess, you know, not taken seriously, like with a lot of, you know, mental illnesses, it's like, oh, everybody's sad sometimes. So, right, right. right but right. it's true. And everybody's disfluent sometimes, but it, it gets to a point where it makes your life 
difficult and impedes your life. And then, then that's what we're dealing with here. And people don't understand that. And they're not, you know, being as empathetic as they should be. Yeah, and uh, uh, but I think nowadays, uh, for, for various reasons, uh, school teachers and educators are are more aware of of, of what stuttering is, uh, because they 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 have here in Manitoba now uh, speech therapists in schools they, they make visits they're, they're they're very sporadic in my in 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 in, in, in my knowledge of, of of what what goes on but 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 the, but but the teachers inform the school teachers what's going on but when i was in school it was such a thing then it never happened and i i, I remember one one teacher uh uh, uh, calling me a, a hooting owl because as a secondary, I would, uh, I, I, I would go uh, to, 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 to start off a word. Uh, my name is uh, John uh, Pasquich. <laughs> so it, it, was, it, it was my 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 attempt at the diaphragmatic breathing, not knowing such a thing existed as diaphragmatic, uh, the, the, uh, the diaphragmatic breathing. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I think they, things are better now. Uh, I know that when my uh, son was growing up, pe people uh, are more accepting. The, the 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 young people while he was growing up were more accepting of, of people who were not like them, whether, whether, whether ethnically, racially, or, or, or physically. But uh, I, I think when I was growing up, kids, uh, kids were more cruel. But then you have all these reports of, uh, of uh, bullying at schools. So I don't know. <laughs> John, I have a question, oh, sorry. A question for you: If we yeah, wanted no, to, if we wanted to uh, do a workshop uh, around on, on speakable, do you think that that would be an option? Turn into a workshop, like do a sure, workshop? absolutely. Would yeah, you be willing sure. to work with us on that down the road? Oh, uh, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Since you didn't. Did necessarily in the in the way that most people do experience speech therapy and are a little bit more critical as people should be as to how the therapy works what are some kind of things that you think would be beneficial in speech therapy for people who stutter what are things that a clinic you would you would look for in a clinician if you were ever to seek treatment uh, well that, that that's that's a hard one that's uh, such a hard one because, uh, 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 as you and Greg know, every individual is different depending on age and 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 and, and, and what resource what resources they have. The, the the more, especially when a child is growing up, the more resources that the child has, that the child feels that that people. Uh, are supporting him, the better it would be. So I would, uh, but this is hard to do uh, for 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 speech uh, therapist. I, I I would talk to the uh, the uh, the parents, of course. I would talk to the school teacher. I I I would even uh, talk to the uh, child's um, friends, family members, and ask, ask the child. Uh, where are the problems? Is is, is 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 there one particular person giving him a a hard time? Well, what would he like to uh, uh, to get from those within his circle? Uh, I, I I would like that because, uh, as you know, so, um, that's, uh, stutterers so often say, I I I. Uh, I, I felt so alone. I feel uh, alone, and 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 when you're young, also, you 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 don't want to talk about it very often with uh, with people who can help you. 
Yeah, for sure. We even just this morning did um, a unit in my fluency disorders class on active listening and being an effective listener and just giving the client a place to be and express how they're feeling. So like that is so important, it's something I value so much in, I mean, what we're doing here on this podcast and also in my future practice. Um, and I guess the last question I had, uh, circling back to we were talking about acceptance, and I'm wondering if there was any specific point or anything in your journey that kind of was like a turning point um, where you kind of made that shift into accepting your stutter or working on accepting? No, it, 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 it's a lifelong thing. There, there, there was no single turning point, and uh, and. He, 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 even now, as, as an old guy, I don't totally uh, accept it because uh, because uh, uh, because if the other person is not accepting it, uh, I, I I inevitably uh, react. One inevitably reacts, but but you 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 have to uh, know how to temper that reaction you 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 just have to i i i don't think you you you, you can ever eliminate it uh but it's just uh, something you 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 have to yeah you uh, you have to accept that you stutter and you have to accept that the person you're talking to is absolutely clueless <laughs> and so how how you navigate that? <laughs> it's um, it, it's up to you, but just don't don't overreact to either the person or your stuttering. Well, John, I've got one last question. You mentioned that you knew Dr. Crow, Robert Crow, that passed away in March. Did you yeah, mind dealing with him? Yes, yes. You want to share a little bit about him? Well. I, I remember Bob, uh, Bob. Bob was a was a really nice man, and uh, and he practiced uh, as he he spoke, as he he practiced what what he spoke. And I mean by by this way, uh, his his therapy was mostly fluency shaping, and I I liked I I remember thinking uh, uh, that do the doctor Bob spoke so well. That's a good way of speaking, and I think for for for, for those who worked with 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 with, with, with the doctor Bob, uh, I think may, may, many were uh, were were affected by that, and and he helped. Uh, yeah, yeah, and 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 everybody that I know who who worked with. Uh, but with Dr. Bob, uh, only say positive things about him. Well, well, John, I mean, uh, thank you very much for your time today. It's, it's, it's been great re reconnecting with you. And it's been, you know, Caitlin and I learned so much about studying. We're always learning. And it's what, we, what we need people like yourself to, to, to sort of share their personal stories with. We learn, it helps us to become more motivated and, and inspirational. Well, well uh, th th thank, th th uh, th 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 thank you for the invite, Greg and Caitlin. I, I appreciate this. And if anything, I can help in any other way, you know, I, I, I'm here. Some Stutter Love, Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about stuttering has so much to talk about. Let's start listening. This has been an episode of Some Stutter Love. Newfoundland and Labrador's first podcast about stuttering. Some Stutter Le is hosted and produced by Greg O'Grady, Caitlin Mayo, Dr. Paul De Decker, Melanie Crane, and Luca Dinu. Some Stutter Le is available on Anchor, Spotify, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Radio Public. You can also check out the Some Stutter Le channel on YouTube. To ask a question, send us a comment or suggestion, or just to get in touch, find us online at Some Stutter Podcast, one word, on Instagram or at Some Stutter Le Pod on Facebook. On Facebook. 
Thanks for listening. 